So in my recording setup, I have two LED lights that I use to kind of light up my shots. Uh, the two lights I'm using, they're from Monoprice. They're very cheap. They're, um, I think they're called Photo Light 160, which means there's 160 individual LEDs in there. And the reason why I got them, they're cheap. They were cheap um, and I knew they'd get the job done and they have. I have no complaints about them. They've done wonders. They, they're they super bright. It's white light. It's great. It's awesome. I can mount them onto tripods using some little adapters that were like super, super cheap as well. Are we noticing a theme? But I have, I do have one complaint as I've used them a lot now. I've been using them for probably about nine months, almost a year. Um, they run on six double a batteries alkaline double a batteries which is fine that's another reason why i liked them to be honest i was like oh this will be easy i just shove some batteries in and the batteries do last for a fairly long time but when the batteries start to burn out they really start to burn out and i've been in the middle of shoots before or i've started shooting a video and i can tell i can just tell that the lights are not as bright as they should be and before I know it, just getting really dim, I can see the, how the, the individual LEDs are just getting dimmer and I don't have any more AA batteries. So then it's like, oh, I could either go to the store right now or I could keep shooting and hope I can fix it in post. And more often than not, I hope I can fix it in post and like I can, but I mad at myself because I know if I just got more batteries, it would, wouldn't have been a problem. So I started looking into how you can convert battery operated devices to run on um, AC or DC power, AKA to plug into a wall, power it that way, no batteries required. And um, I was coming up with mixed results. Uh, people were doing some really intense things with circuitry and stuff, and I was like, there's gotta be a, a simpler way that's just as safe. Um, so the first step, if you wanna try to figure out how to do this, is to figure out what voltage your device is actually using from the batteries. It's running on six AA batteries. Six. Each AA battery, standard AA battery, is running on 1.5 volts. So each one of those individual batteries is giving out 1.5 volts. Now, 1.5 volts times six is nine. That means there's a total of nine volts that has to go into these lights to make them light up super nice and pretty and bright. Now, What's a super common power supply? Nine volt. I even had one just for my guitar pedals, which is great, which means even in theory, you could power these on nine volt batteries if you really wanted to. The next step was to open up the light and see what was actually happening inside. Now figuring out how to open up the lights at first seemed like a bit of a challenge, but once I cracked it, it was fairly simple. There are four foam dots around the front corner of the lights. You pry those out, and there's a little sticky part on the inside. It's so sticky that when you put it back in, it goes in just fine and you still get an aesthetically pleasing flat black front after you've ripped it open to look at its guts. So you take those out and there's four screws, two of which come out and the other two are kind of lodged in the corners. So you take that off. Now you're at this thing that kind of looks like a turkey pan. Silver bright helps the lights reflect. Just take that out ever so gently. Then you're left with the actual circuit board that has all the lights hooked up on, which is really cool to look at. And you'll actually see there's individual numbers for each LED. Now that's also held in by four corner screws. Take those out, all four of those come out. And you know, at this time, probably be a good time to get some sort of magnet to hold out your screws so that you don't lose them or your cats don't eat them. So once you get that out, you lift the board out with the lights and you see another little board with some capacitors on it and some red and black wires. Once you get to the red and black wires, you know you're looking at some good stuff. That's where your power is coming from. And as we all know, say it with me now, black is ground, red is power. Those nine volts coming through that red wire. So I took out that little circuit board so I could have better access to kind of look at it. There's two screws holding that in, very simple, and they come out. And now on that circuit board, you can see there's red and black wire leads that are going to the actual lights. That's how the power's going through. And then there's red and black leads going on the other end of the circuit board. And you see they're going through a circuit with the capacitors to get to the lights. So that's a way to kind of condition the power. Now when I saw that, that meant I didn't have to really worry about conditioning 
my power too much that I'd be providing through the wall because that there's a circuit already going in there. A lot of times, if you look up like battery replacement uh, things online, they'll talk about adding in resistors and capacitors and stuff to kind of regulate your voltage. Because this was such a simple mathematical conversion to nine volts and there's already a circuit doing that, that made me feel a little bit better about putting in pure volts to see what was gonna happen. Now, the way that I connected power to test this out, Adafruit loves alligator clips. They're very into them. And they actually have an alligator clip wire that is a black and red lead that has a DC barrel female end on the other side. So you can plug it into some sort of power supply, plug it into the wall, and then you can clip those leads on the appropriate ends of your circuit, which is super convenient. And I decided I was gonna use those clips onto the solder lugs where power will be coming in from the batteries uh, to get to the lights. So I clipped those on very carefully, making sure that I was just touching the solder ends that I needed to, nothing was crossing, nothing was touching unnecessarily. So I have the alligator clips clipped on to the light. I plug the power supply into the power strip and then I press the power button on the light. And that was just so that I could have kind of a more control thing. I want to see, like, make sure I plug it in, power's going through, nothing's sparking, nothing's happening. I push on power and see what happens. And if something was wrong, I could easily throw the switch on the power strip if I needed to, or quickly unplug if I needed to. So the moment of truth came, I plugged into the power strip, I flipped on power to the light, and it lit up. It was perfect. It was great. I was able to adjust brightness. That's another thing about these lights. You can adjust brightness. I tested it out. I let it run for a little bit. I was touching the alligator clips, the plastic portions, make sure nothing was getting hot, was touching the PCB and the light, make sure nothing was getting too hot. Cause with the batteries, like they really don't get hot at all. And I was also touching the kind of power supply to make sure it wasn't getting unnecessarily hot. And everything was staying pretty consistent. Everything was good. So I consider this experiment a success and that means I am going to move forward in converting these lights to run on DC power. Now how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to have to kind of break open that plastic housing a little bit of the back. I think that's probably going to be the only way to do it. Um, I am going to want to take the battery clips out um, and it looks like um, they kind of just flop out. And then I'm probably gonna end up doing a, a small PCB where I just solder in a barrel jack and some wires and then solder those wires out the back um, to the, the circuit board that lives inside the lights that brings power to the actual LEDs. So it just so happened out of luck that the day that I filmed the uh, actual hooking up of the alligator clips to the light, uh, I looked up a mono price just to see if I could get any more information about it and it turns out that the light was on sale for 50% off, which is awesome. It's already a cheap light and it's like super cheap. So I ordered a third one because why not? And I'm thinking I'm gonna use that one as my one that I kind of like hack open and kind of play around with before I destroy my two go-to shooting lights. And that way I'll be able to see exactly what I'll be able to do to make the light um, as user-friendly as possible and be running off of wall power, nine volts, DC power. So this was probably, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit more adventurous with each of my kind of hardware hacking adventures. Uh, this is the first time that I could say like, it was a true hacking and experiment, not just kind of like, oh, look at the pretty PCB. So that's exciting. Uh, and I encourage all of you as always to open up your electronics, uh, figure out what's going on. Once you start to get a little bit more comfortable and maybe start experimenting with something like this, as always though, be careful, but never be scared. Um, but that's gonna do it for today's episode. I will, um, this will probably be considered like part one, uh, and then part two will be kind of making kind of a prototype of having the light hooked up to the wall and having a more permanent solution rather than, you know, having the whole thing wide open. Um, and so, yeah. Another episode of Blitz Day DIY. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, toss me those thumbs down. If you hate it, leave your questions and comments below. Find me on all social media nonsense, links are down below. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more hacking like this. 
And until next time, see you around. Thank you.